So uh, I had somebody uh, that watched a recent video of mine um, about uh, why I can't vote for any blue, right? Like I'm, I'm not an any blue will do kind of guy. I'm not a Democrat. I've never said that I'm a Democrat. I'm really at this point don't have a real party affiliation. Um, I think the Green Party gets close, but there's some chicanery going on back there in the, um, in the, in the way that they selected Howie Hawkins. Um, and I've gotten, you know, I've gotten a lot of uh, mixed messages um, from supporters of the Green Party. And, and I will say that I'm a supporter of the Green Party, too. I, I want there to be more parties in America. Anyway, uh, so I, I, I've gotten a lot of shit for this whole, like, I'm not going to vote for Joe Biden because I don't want to vote for two of the, the, the lesser of two rapists, essentially. Um, and I'm not a Democrat. I criticize the Democratic Party just as much as I've criticized the Republican Party. In my younger days, that's all I did. I criticized the Republican Party a, a fuck ton because when you're getting into politics uh, and when you're getting into political comedy, it's easy to make fun of the Republicans. They're fucking crazy, right? Especially once they started moving like clo and cl more into like the Tea Party realm. And, um, you know, so I was getting a lot of shit. But there were a couple of people that were watching it that were that were like, cool, I get what you're saying. I might disagree with X, Y, Z point, but that's cool. And, uh, you know, I would say out of the amount of people that commented on this, uh, on this video, I would say like maybe anywhere between 7 and 10% of the people were actually willing to have some level of discourse. And I've, I've done a bunch of tweets and made a bunch of statements and what, what have you on it. And I'll probably write some stuff about it because that's kind of how I process and channel uh, all of that stuff. But one of the people that, that wanted to have um, a conversation and enjoyed the video uh, was curious about the sources that I use for, uh, for, for you know, my... Um, my videos that I do here, Forkful of Noodles, The Dispatch, Taboo Table Talk, all that sort of stuff, right? They were, they, they, were, they were like, what sources do you use? And I've talked about a bunch of them. I've talked about a lot of the sources that I use on, this, uh, on these videos. And, and I usually have the sources put up on the, on the video itself. Um, but I think they were just curious, you know, like, where do you go? What are, what are some things that I should pay attention to? Because sometimes when you're watching a video like this and I pull up a thing, like, the logo is not prominent enough on the screen for long enough that you can be like oh that's that website or you know i might say like oh we're, we're going through a payday report or whatever right so and then and then it's like it's not clear uh or you mishear it and you don't know where it is so i figured i would uh respond to that individual uh and do a video about the sources that i like some of the independent um independent true lefty journalists that are out there that uh, I support, that I uh, read and look into, uh, that I trust, um, you know. So uh, to start with, I've, I've uh, especially over the last couple months, Mint Press News has been putting out some really great stuff. Um, they do a lot of stuff about American imperialism. They have really great articles about mutual aid. Uh, my friend Eleanor Goldfield writes for them. Um, uh, Manar Muhawish is the chief editor. Uh, she also has a podcast called The Mint Cast, uh, which um, I have fallen behind on listening to. Uh, I will be honest about that. Uh, my friend Eleanor Goldfield was just on there. I listened to that one because I used that as a source for... Um, my most recent Citizen Revolution uh, show about West Virginia. Uh, and that video will be coming out in, in a few weeks here. So um, Mint Press News, I highly recommend them. Um, they also have really great pieces about a lot about foreign policy and, um, you know, what's what's going on overseas about militarism and imperialism. Um, they have a lot of the, uh, great coverage about uh, the protests. Uh, they're based in Minneapolis, so there's a lot of coverage about uh, defunding the police and all that kind of stuff. So highly recommend checking out Mint Press News. Highly recommend checking out the Mint cast. Um, I had the distinct pleasure and honor of having uh, Manar Mahawish on uh, my podcast uh, on Taboo Table Talk. And if you haven't listened to that episode, uh, please go and listen to that episode. The link to my podcast is in the description of uh, all of the videos that I put out. So um, no excuses there uh, to, to not listen to it. Uh, the next is The Gray Zone. 
I, I very much enjoy the gray zone. Uh, they are, um, again, sort of these lefty socialist, kind of lefty socialist folks. Um, they, they have done a lot of in-depth coverage on uh, Venezuela specifically, uh, uh, on Iran, what's going on with the with the with, with the, um, the conflicts in Iran? Uh, I watch uh, the, there's specific journalists within the gray zone that I follow pretty closely. Uh, Aaron Mate being one of them. Aaron has a fantastic show called Pushback. Um, he's the, he's he's basically broken Russia Gate. He he proved that Russia Gate was a hoax. Uh, he wrote an article on The Nation. He's done several videos about it. He's had debates with uh, pro-Russiagate people, including CIA analysts that have come out and said, um, you know, well, Black Lives Matter and movements like that are specifically, um, you know, uh, Russian to sow discord in, uh, in the American landscape. And, like, we really don't have... Uh, a problem with race like and and Aaron pushbacks on them which is why the show is called pushback um, that's on the YouTubes they they're they're on the YouTubes there um, I really really like Aaron's work I really really like the way that Aaron uh, the, the perspective that Aaron brings to the table uh, one of the things that I do need to dig into and um, this might possibly be like a bigger dispatch type of uh, type of thing to cover um, is the uh, OPEC whistleblowers that basically have come out and said that what happened in Duma in 26, uh, 2017, April 2017, I believe, which, you know, had uh, Trump send out fighter planes and um, essentially blow up an a air base or an air strip, landing strip or something like that. I, I'm sorry, I'm not... Uh, getting the words right on that, but uh, he basically, you know, sent a bombing raid to, to Syria and the UK and, and, and France was involved as well. Uh, and that was all based on uh, Assad gassing his own citizens in Duma. And you had CNN reporters that were like tasting poisonous gas. And they're like, oh, you can taste the poison. It's really, can you, it's palpable in there. Um, well, Aaron, Aaron Mate on his show Pushback has had several whistleblowers He's had um, uh, professors and experts come on his show and essentially prove uh, why this was kind of like another WMD type of um, type of lie to push more uh, militarism and push more troops into into Syria. That's something I need to dig into, get the specifics of it, uh, because he's done a lot of coverage on that. Uh, another person that's uh, done a lot of coverage on that is Anya Parmpil. She has a show called Red Lines as part of uh, the Gray Zone. Again, does a lot of work with uh, Venezuela, done a lot of work with Iran, um, really a lot of foreign policy type stuff. They do some electoral stuff. Um, they've done a lot with the Black Lives Matter movement as well, the Defund the Police movement as well. And these are all these are all folks that are not, in the corporate mainstream sphere um so you know you are going to get a more in-depth coverage from them they're not here they're not particularly interested interested in providing you with a 30 second sound bite you know they are interested in giving the objective story and delivering as much of the truth as possible Recently on my channel, I did a, a whole thing about how uh, Wikipedia has uh, denounced like, things like Mint Press News and The Gray Zone as like viable sources because they don't fall, fall into the agendas that Wikipedia wants to put out there. So, and I have used Wikipedia as a source before, but, you know, and I always kind of was a little like, okay, we got to double check some things and let's look at where things are coming from and so on and so forth. But now it's like, you really got to take it with a grain of salt because if it doesn't fit this like neoliberal fucking and Ayn Rand, you know, libertarian pro free market, pro capitalist ideology, then they're going to skew the narrative on their site because that's specifically what they're going to do. Um, and the Gray Zone is one of those, uh, Gray Zone and Mint Press News have been, have basically been said that they're not, um, 
they're not reliable sources, blah, 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 whatever, right? Um, another writer on uh, The Gray Zone that I enjoy a lot is Ben Norton. Uh, ben Norton has done um, a lot of in-depth stuff on uh, Julian Assange. He, did, he broke uh, an amazing story uh, about how Julian Assange was being spied on and uh, Sheldon Adelson was, was involved in, um, in paying, essentially, for, for spying on Julian Assange uh, while he was in the Ecuadorian embassy. And that's illegal to do, especially because you're spying on him meeting with his lawyers uh, to talk about this espionage case anyway. Uh, Max Blumenthal, another fantastic writer uh, for, for the Gray Zone as well. He's done a lot of stuff on Venezuela. He was down in Venezuela. He got an interview with Nicolas Maduro. Uh, so, you know, and corporate media is really interested in, in going down there and talking to these leaders. They are just going to kind of push this narrative and uh, skew the history and skew what's going on, call it, you know, demonize the word socialism. Um, mi misappropriate communism and, uh, and, and sit there and, and say these are all uh, the same thing as, uh, uh, you know, some kind of left-wing authoritarian state. And, um, you know, it's like things like Venezuela is the guy gave food to people during this pandemic. And while America is putting economic sanctions on, on the country so that they can't get the shit that they need. He's still able to feed his people and cancel rents and mortgages and ensure that people have health services. And in America, it's like we're struggling to do any like a bunch of those things. Uh, so but that's the country that we're going to demonize. Right. Because they don't follow with our economic philosophies. Uh, they don't follow this free market laissez faire, you know, let it determine what it is and we always have to save the markets because the market is is the ultimate you know form of religion in america um is that's they don't so they have to demonize these countries because of that uh and you have gray zone and Press news out there that are going to cover the story objectively like if maduro does something shitty they're not going to be like well we're going to forget about it. no they they talk about that angle of it as well um, because they're good fucking journalists, and that's what they're, you're supposed to do. Um, another one that I uh, that I particularly like is the Intercept uh, with Gren, uh, Glenn Greenwald, Jeremy Scahill. Those are those are the folks from the Intercept. I enjoy the Intercept a lot. Um, I think it's a it's a good uh, paper. Although you do have to watch who you're reading on there because you do have some Russia Gators that are part of that. So The Intercept is an interesting uh, publication because they have uh, very deferring, like, I mean, politically different voices, just all within their own paper. So, like, James Risen will will do pro Russiagate stories, and then Glenn Greenwald will do, uh, like, an anti-Russiagate story and be like, here's why James Risen is wrong, and stuff like that. So... You just have to kind of keep an eye on, on, on that sort of stuff. But one of the things that I'm, you know, I, I do I want to address is the blue leaks that came out and that a lot of that information is coming from, um, you know, the Intercept. I, I use them as a source quite often. Uh, I like them. I think they're a good source. They do some really good in-depth uh, coverage. They covered a lot about Julian Assange. They cover a lot about whistleblowers um, because, uh, you know, uh, Edward Snowden gave the NSA whistleblow, uh, whistleblown documents to... Glenn Greenwald, which then that story got spun around in in sort of the mainstream as, well, he could have given it to, to Chinese spies. And it's like, but he didn't, though. And they're like, well, he could have. And I was like, yeah, I mean, potentially. I think we have the potential. Like, uh, you know, who doesn't? Like, fucking, you could have a 10-year-old that has the potential to set a building on fire, but they don't. Like, so, you know, so... They demonized him on the potential of something that he didn't even do. Um, so they do a lot of coverage on whistleblowers. I like I like them for that sort of stuff, especially. Um, they they usually are pretty solid on that and pretty fair on their reporting of that. 
Uh, something, and we'll see this later in this video as well, is Payday Report. They do a lot of coverage on strikes. A lot of coverage on strikes. They're, uh, they're primarily one of the major sources that I go to on like what's going on with strikes right now. What's going on with the labor movement right now. Um, another one, too, is In These Times. Uh, it covers a lot about the labor movement as well, and I've used them as a source, uh, especially in the coming videos. There's, there's going to be a video about the general strike movement from the Citizen Revolution shows, uh, and uh, I think it's going to be a three or four part four parter. And I basically um, like in these times is a pretty big source that I use for that. So. Uh, then we have uh, uh, Eleanor Goldfield, excellent source. Uh, she writes for Mint Press News right now, um, and uh, she does her own independent journalism. She does a lot of organizing, creative activism. Uh, she does a, a lot of stuff with Lee Camp, uh, Common Censored Podcast, which I'm super behind on. Uh, they do a live stream every Friday. They're, you know, kind of during my Citizen Revolution shows, but whatever. I'll 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 let Lee go on that. I'll um I'll I'll, I'll forgive him on that. <laughs> uh, just giving him shit for no reason. Uh, but speaking of Lee Camp, uh, redacted tonight with Lee Camp. That's another uh, good good news source that I've used, uh, especially some of his VIP interviews because he gets some really cool guests. Uh, some really cool guests that I I probably can't guess. <laughs> um, so. Uh, yeah, I, I use him as a source, uh, as well. Uh, and I know he's a comedian, but I mean, our generation has gotten more news from, uh, someone like Jon Stewart than, you know, fucking Tucker Carlson or Anderson Cooper. So I think that trend continues because as comedians, as artists, um, you know, our particular goal is to challenge the status quo um you know we don't really have particular biases i mean artists do get bought out artists do get purchased by the corporate you know neoliberalism and this like you know the industry kind of sucks people in so th those people kind of work within an agenda, uh, sometimes knowingly, sometimes not knowingly, but for the most part, independent artists, true independent artists are going to push back against the system, are going to push back against the status quo. And that's part of the reason why we listen to people like Jon Stewart and Lee Camp and Dave Chappelle and Jimmy Dore, Graham Elwood, you know, Ron Placone. These are all folks, uh, that, um, uh, W. Kamau Bell, uh, is another one there. Uh, these are all folks that I think are pushing back against the, the, the corporate system that's in place right now, uh, the, 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 the status quo, and they're punching up instead of punching down in terms of comedy. Um, and they are informing people and they are educating people through their comedy. They are opening people to new perspectives, new points of views, and new way of, ways of thinking. So I highly recommend those folks. Lee Camp, Jimmy Dore, Graham Elwood, Rumplecone, especially, uh, they're, they, they all have, um, you know, these sort of outsider lefty television shows. Um, some of you are going to be like, why not John Oliver? And it's like, because John Oliver is kind of fucking neoliberal. You know, he shit on third parties for no reason. Uh, with, I mean, and, and didn't really have like a great excuse except that Jill Stein put out a weird folk album in the early nineties or some shit. Uh, and then he did a smear piece on Venezuela and he's been really condescending and kind of a prick about a lot of different subject matters. And, uh, I think he's one of those people that if you don't believe the exact thing that he believes, then he thinks you're a fucking idiot. Um, uh, so I don't, I, I kind of grew out of John Oliver. Um, Hassan Minaj, I've watched some of his show. Um, uh, it's fine. It's okay. Um. I'm not a huge fan of Hassan's style. The The basic template and concept of the show is pretty similar to mine, and I've been doing my show since 2013. No big deal. Not trying to brag there. Uh, <laughs> but the idea of picking a subject matter and kind of delving deep into it, um, you know, uh, it's just I don't have a multi-billion dollar budget, and I don't have Netflix to pay me. Um, I am 
you know, I'm, I'm paid by you guys. I'm paid by the people that watch this video, become patrons, make one-time donations, buy tickets to my shows. Um, you know, uh, my backdrop is drawings I made that I think represent me a little bit more and, and a curt and like a, a, a top sheet. That's a curtain. I just don't have the budget that Hasan Minhaj has. I think he's fine. I don't. I don't hate him. I don't like love him a whole lot either. So, you know, take that for what it is. I watch some of his segments every once in a while, but you know, it, again, it's like it's part of Netflix. You, take that with a grain of salt. You know, uh, even W. Kamau Bell, he's on CNN, so I'm pretty sure there's certain things that he can and can't say. Because of the network that he's a part of. It's the same thing with Jon Stewart. There were, there were things that he can and can't say. Uh, because of the network he was part of. That's just uh, that's just part of the reality of what it was. But Jon Stewart and I think W. Kamau Bell too. Are doing a really good job of kind of navigating the corporate entertainment waters. And still providing like in-depth, um, you know, anti-establishment type material. And pushing back against the status quo. Uh, Chappelle Show did the same thing. And, you know, part of it was like, had they restricted them, I think because of the popularity of their show, it would have looked bad for the network. And that's really what it, what it boils down to. Uh, another uh, great independent journalist that I like is Kim Iverson. She has a YouTube channel. Uh, I disagree with Kim on a couple things. Um, you know, uh, she's been doing some stuff with COVID that in the beginning I was really on board with. Um, but she's really on the pro-Sweden train. And, uh, you know, the, the evidence that I've looked up over the course of the last couple months is, and I, and I talked about this in a prior video, uh, is Sweden is not doing great. They're just not. The, their experiment failed, essentially. Like, it didn't work, uh, you know. And the argument that Kim presents in terms of this one subject matter um, is that they were predicting the exact amount of debts that they did get, so technically they're not a failure. But, you know, like, the other part of it was they were trying to achieve herd immunity, but they didn't because only 6.1% of the people... Uh, have the antibodies and so like this idea really didn't work and so that leaves us with a big question mark in terms of like what is the best way to um, combat this virus that we're that we're um, that we're seeing in our world right now so I do disagree with her in, in certain things but that's okay um, I think you you should be able to disagree with the people that you watch even if you watch them avidly even if you're a fan of them um, you know, it's okay to disagree. Just be respectful about the way that you disagree. Practice some discourse. And I think, I think that's part of the problem. And it's, it's why people will, will discount news sources and, uh, you know, certain independent media, uh, because we don't know how to have discourse. We can't sit there and say, well, yes, it's a lefty perspective and this, that, and the third, but... Have you seen this news story? What, what are your thoughts on this? And we can sit there and be like, well, this is CNN. So they're kind of missing some elements that don't make, that th don't make their advertisers money. Um, but, you know, th let's, let's take what we know from CNN and add what we've learned from the gray zone. And let's figure out where, where we can be. Because to me, here's what I think this is. And they'll go, oh, wow, that's not, you know, I 90% I, I agree. With, you know, so even though I disagree with Kim... I can still respect a lot of the work that she does. She has some really great interviews. Um, she had a, a interview with a black conservative, a black Republican. Um, you know, she's had uh, people that talk about the Fed and public banking on there. She's had, uh, she's doing a big thing with the West Bank that I have to catch up on. Um, but you know, I, I she's got a lot of really great stuff on there. I disagree with her on this one particular thing, and I think that's okay. Um, so Kim, Kim Iverson, I'd recommend checking her out. Uh, Hardlands Media, I just had them on my podcast. So Hardlands Media is fantastic. They're a Chicago-based, um, uh, where is it? 
losing words, losing words, a Chicago-based media company, uh, journalists, independent journalists from based in Chicago. They do a lot of coverage about Chicago itself, uh, but they also cover a lot of other, you know, foreign uh, foreign policy stuff, uh, electoral politics. Um, they're actually going to be a big source for uh, some of the upcoming videos about electoral politics uh, that I'm that I'm going to be releasing in the next like two three weeks. Uh, you know, so, um, Minds Unleashed is another one. Uh, you gotta uh, kind of be a little, keep your eye on who's writing what kind of thing. Um, because some of it goes, it, it, it is sort of a, oh, like an open source journalism kind of thing. I like them. They put out some very interesting things. Um, and they bring articles and news stories to the light that I don't think people would have normally seen. Uh, Jacobin, very lefty, uh, kind of socialist paper uh, that I that I enjoy a lot, and uh, Dr. Richard Wolff, that's my favorite economist. Uh, I think you guys have heard me talk about Dr. Richard Wolff a bunch. Um, he is a Marxist economist. He is a uh, major criti- uh, cr- uh, critic of capitalism, um, and uh, he's awesome. I really, really enjoy. Uh, the work that he does, uh, he's had, you know, Eleanor Goldfield, Lee Camp, Jimmy Dore on his show. He's had some, I mean, every time I watch his show, I find a movement or something that I'm like, that's fucking cool. Like, I got to check more information about that. Um, you know, it definitely, definitely an eye opener kind of, uh, kind of a, a guy to watch. He has a show called Economic Update. Uh, excellent show, excellent podcast. Highly recommend it, and he's a really good source. Uh, he's a really good source of information. So those are some of them. Um, if you have a couple favorites, you should uh, drop that shit in the comments. Uh, I, I mean, I also listen, you know, to just to see what the corporate landscape is saying, just so we know what the, you know, it's like know what the other side is saying. It's like so, I, I you know, I'll read some, you know, the, the Nation magazine. Uh, you know, um, I'll look at what CNN is saying or MSNBC, Fox News, that sort of stuff. Um, NPR, even NPR is super corporate, you know, NPR is, uh, NPR has a lot of, uh, um, uh, weapons manufacturers that are, that are funding it. Boeing is a weapons manufacturer. Uh, they have a lot of rich people that, uh, that donate to them. Like they're not listener driven. Fucking I'm listener driven. (laughs) Um. but I will listen to some of them. I will I will use some of those uh, as sources, like the Guardian and the Independent and things of that sort, because it's important to know what this what the other side is saying as well, so you can kind of have a well rounded um, viewpoint of like, oh, this is how this is how you know this narrative is spun versus this, and you know, let's figure out what exactly is uh, wh- where exactly we're meeting in the middle. So it's important to do that sort of stuff. What is up, everybody? Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that like button. Please share it around with a friend or an enemy or whoever you think would enjoy uh, a video like this. Uh, Just share it out. Uh, YouTube and Facebook usually suppress content like this. They don't usually show content like this to to a lot of people. So I very much depend on you guys, the viewers and the fans of the show, to get the word out. Uh, and make sure that you're subscribed. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell icon to make sure you're getting notifications about this video. Uh, I have a bunch of different ways that you can financially support this show. One is by just making a one-time donation. You can just make a one-time donation. Say, hey, that was a fucking great video, and I want to support it financially. Here's X amount of whatevers. Uh, Another way is by becoming a sustaining member. Sustaining membership gets you free tickets to shows, uh, unreleased stand-up comedy content and storytelling content, and early access to a full uh, holistic episodes of Fork Full of Noodles uh, that you get weeks in advance. Weeks in advance, you guys. Uh, and another way to help is by coming to a live show. I've got a bunch of live stand-up comedy performances coming up. Uh, I'm going to be doing the Fringe Festival in Providence, Rhode Island, the, Pro- uh, the Fringe PVD. All of these are virtual festivals, by the way. Uh, July 30th and 31st at 6 p.m. If you want to be part of the virtual live audience, let me know. Send me a message. Leave a comment. Uh, email me. Uh, and I'll send you the donation link. And I'll make sure that you're on the list to be a part of the live virtual audience. It's July 30th and 31st at 6 p.m. And then we're on to doing more of the Citizen Revolution live virtual stand-up comedy shows. 
each week brand new content, brand new material, and a brand new subject matter, and I donate half the ticket sales to a grassroots organization. Uh, the next one is August 7th, and then on August 14th and August 28th, and then we'll be moving right into the fall, so keep up with these dates. You can go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys so much for uh, continuing to come back to support this channel. Until the next one, we'll see you on the road. Thank you.